Dancing with the Stars is on, our great ABC program, and of course, Bristol Palin is one of the contestants. And there was an odd incident last night. We'll let you be the judge of exactly what was going on. Take a look. Call, text, and log on to ABC.com. There's booing in the ballroom. We don't know why. Why is there booing? I don't know. What's All right, doing? everybody, you know what to do. <laughs> Support them right now with your votes. Tom? All right, thank you, Brooke. I'm here with uh, guest ballroom commentator Sarah Palin, who joins us from Alaska. Uh, and just for the record, uh, the host did say that they thought the booing was for the poor scores by Jennifer Grey, who actually did pretty well. And not she for, did, and she won the first place. They wanted her to have an eight or a nine. Um, <laughs> but, you know, of course, because you know what? People in America would never boo a politician. Never. It's never would happened. never, ever, Not ever happen. Not baseball anything like that. No. All right. Well, we are excited to have another Nate with us. <laughs> this guy goes by Nate, as opposed to Nathan. You may know him as the 538.com. Um, and uh, and you got picked up recently, of course, by the New York Times, That's which right. is great. This is Nate Silver. Congratulations. Um, Let's just jump in and start talking about your numbers, because unlike sure. some of our guests who don't want to talk numbers, you actually get to do this full time. So um, tell us what you're seeing House Senate wise in terms of the number of seats you think Democrats lose or Republicans pick up or. Well, for the Senate, it's maybe not as important the number of seats as whether Republicans get to get to 50 without right. help from Joe Lieberman or Ben Nelson or someone defecting. And it seems like every time the Democrats have something good happen. There's an equal and opposite kind of reaction, right, where, you know, Delaware probably yep. not going to be a GOP pickup with Christine O'Donnell. Um, Democrats like their polling with good reason in California and Washington State. But this morning, as you talked about at the top of the show, you know, you have a poll in Connecticut saying it's close. You have a poll, another poll in West Virginia saying uh, the Republican candidate is ahead, you know. So the, the, the same basic story is true where the GOP has to sweep or almost sweep all the toss-up contests on election night. But but that can happen in wave years. And what's changing is that the list of what the toss-ups are is, right. is moving. You know, it's a moving target. But the House picture, you're, you're rating it as rather, rather likely right now. that the, We have about a, a two and three chance, yeah. yeah. And, you know, and I think there's a, I mean, the, the House is difficult to forecast because there are so many individual races. You know, there are about 90 or 100 races that we think are, are competitive. What, um, what, and, do you, what do you make of the, the strategy we're seeing now from the White House of trying to, trying to fire up the base? Is there anything you've seen in the numbers that suggests that this kind of chiding or you know, kind of reminding of the stakes it makes a difference in terms of voter turnout? Well, I don't know if it's the best motivational tactic, but it is clear that you know, there is some, as bad as numbers are for Democrats and they're really bad, there is some upside in the sense that we know the Republican base is motivated. The Democratic base probably won't become less motivated. And so if you, you know, if the enthusiasm gap, quote unquote, is closed, they can probably hold the House by a few seats, almost certainly hold the Senate. A case like Wisconsin, where you have a Democratic incumbent who is thought to be fairly popular and Russ Feingold. You know, you have a lot of students in Wisconsin, a lot of kind of old school progressives. If they, if you, if you close the gap there, then you hold Wisconsin, you hold certainly Washington and California, and you hold the Senate with maybe a couple seats to spare. So the stakes are are really high. If, whether it's the best motivational tool or not, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, I'm not but... really a big fan of the shaming yeah. to inspire <laughs> yeah. me. But, but talk for a second, though, about independent voters, because we can talk all we want about the enthusiasm gap. But sure. if you're losing independents, <laughs> as Democrats are right now, by more than two to one, can you still hold the House? Well, maybe. I mean, it depends on how it, <clears throat> it breaks out in individual races, and Democrats are trying to localize this campaign. But there's no doubt that, uh, you know, right now you have a lot of voters, especially independents, who are unhappy with both parties. They don't like either brand. And the polling shows, in spite of disliking both, they tend to gravitate toward Republicans because they're out of power right now. They want, might want to balance the Congress with the White House. So, you know, you have to do two things at once, the White House does, right? Close that enthusiasm gap with your base and also still appeal to independent voters. Can you kind of, you know, it's hard, it's hard to balance those. Health care might motivate core base Democrats to the polls, but independents right. aren't so persuaded about the bill. So it's a tough tightrope to walk. Yeah, and we saw the pre we see the president this week in four states, all purple states, all states that he carried, but states that are really headed in the other direction yeah. this year. Nate Silver, 538.com and the New York Times. We appreciate you being with us. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks. That does it for this edition of Top Line. It's twitter.com slash Twitter.com slash Amy E. Walter, twitter.com slash 538. Our numbers guru right here.